Hi everyone, I'm Hoodie Angel Brandon, and welcome to another Fire Emblem Heroes Unit Build Showcase. Today, we are welcoming the newest member of the Angel Army, Chris. Uh, so, normally, if you look at my uh, selection of plus tens here at the top, all with the blue hearts, uh, almost all of these are characters that I really like and know. With one exception uh, being Klein, who I built entirely because he looks like Yusung from Mystic Messenger. I was like, he's cute, I'm going to build him just off of that. Uh, so most of these are characters that I do know, I'm familiar with, and I really like. Uh, however, Chris is not in that category. He is much more like Klein, where uh, I don't know him. I don't know his character or that much about him because while I have played Fire Emblem 1, I did not play the uh, remake versions that included Chris. So uh, pretty much most of what I know about Chris is from Faye itself and a little bit of what I've kind of picked up uh, here and there from other people talking about Chris. So I'm not super familiar with him, but uh, I thought it'd be really cool since I do tend to really like the Avatar characters. Uh, I absolutely love Byleth, and Corrin is who I really loved right before Byleth. Uh, and even before them, I really liked Robin. And even when I played uh, Fire Emblem uh, Blazing Blade, I really liked Mark. Even though they're not really a playable character and they just kind of show up in like dialogue and in between battles and stuff, I still really enjoyed Mark. So. Uh, I figured at this point I might as well fully commit and uh, build the full Avatar Dream Team, <laughs> as it were. Uh, so we are going to be building Chris for that, although uh, this is Plagian Chris because he's more accessible than uh, regular Chris. I, I did kind of consider regular Chris, but it, being 5-star locked, he would have been really pricey to invest in. Uh, and being another infantry sword, it just kind of didn't feel great. However, Plagian Chris here is a uh, axe cavalry, which is something I don't have, uh, making him stand out quite a bit more. Uh, and he's accessible via grails. And also, his art is just really cool. Like again, I don't I don't know Chris. I don't really uh, care about him on like a uh, character level, but his art here, pretty cool. Like this, really awesome. Lots of cool colors going on here. Uh, very, uh, and this pose is kind of interesting because uh, most characters don't have a pose like this. Most of them are just kind of standing facing head on. So that's kind of interesting. But uh, anyway, I thought it'd be fun to uh, go ahead and build him up and uh, add a new member to the Angel Army. Someone a little unique someone a, a little unknown and mysterious and we can get to know him this way i guess <laughs> uh but i've part of why i waited was uh i wasn't totally convinced i wanted to build him because i didn't know him i didn't have that personal connection so i was kind of waiting to see if they would add anyone else that i liked uh that would take my grails beforehand uh, and i am considering norn but i'm going to do a similar thing where i wait uh, and decide then, by then I'll have more grails. But, so I was waiting on Chris while I accumulated some more grails, and then they started adding the Tempest units into the combat manual shop, and so once they decided to do that, it felt like it was just a natural thing to wait until Chris cycled in here and get a copy for free, so we're going to save a few grails by getting a copy for just some codes. While we're here, we'll grab, uh, Takumi and Ursula, who I didn't bother to get earlier. Uh, but now we have Chris. Uh, we have two copies plus our uh, one that's already been uh, leveled up. So now we need to come to use some grails and purchase the rest of our copies. So we will get another one here. 
and uh, yeah, he he points out that these are not his normal clothes. <laughs> uh, so Chris, uh, again, I'm not super familiar with him, but from what I understand in having played Fire Emblem One, uh, from what I picked up from various uh, people talking online, I think I kind of get why he's not very well liked. It sounds like a, they kind of retconned a lot of Marth's accomplishments and attributed them to Chris instead, uh, is what I've kind of gathered. I'm not sure if that's entirely true or not, but if that's the case, I kind of get it because Marth did do some pretty cool things, and if they just kind of take the credit for that and give it to someone else, I'm not wild about that. But uh, he is part of the Avatar emblem, so um, we're going to overlook that if that's the case. <laughs> uh, but so that is, uh, I've already lost count. How many more? Okay, so I've gotten four. And this will be number five. But, uh, yeah, Axe Cavalry, uh, aside from him, I've considered, like, Gunther or Frederick, but, um, they're just kind of old, and, uh, Frederick's okay, not my favorite. Gunther I really like, but I'm not wild about his art, and then his refine was just kind of okay. Uh, I think it was, like, really restrictive, uh, but I don't remember. I haven't looked at it in a while, but those were the two I was really considering, I might still do Gunther. I'd be more excited if he got like a Resplendent or something, but um, I don't know. But here, this is the eighth one we got. So I think that should bring us to enough uh, copies that we can come over here and uh, create combat manuals, come down here, convert all these copies into manuals, and we go here to merge allies and there we go we have 10 copies uh, but first we will need to uh, promote all of these all right here is 10 copies of Chris and 200,000 feathers gone but they have been promoted and now we must merge them all up and uh, just get some nice stats. Uh, I really like that he's a uh, he like also like uh, Gunter Frederick. Uh, aside from having Gen One BST, that's pretty far behind, uh, which isn't a deal breaker. Again, I've I've at least considered them. Uh, even though Gunter also has that veteran BST penalty, uh, I I like that Chris has more of that speed. Uh, the speed is just always kind of. Speed is important. Either you want a lot of it or you want, like, none of it. And uh, Chris has a decent amount, so it's pretty workable. Uh, whereas I, I don't remember Gunther or Frederick having, like, particularly amazing, but they're also not, like, super min-maxed either. Uh, so the, I, I feel like they're probably just kind of in a awkward position. Uh, I do still have some ideas of what I could do with Gunther, but... Since I wasn't particularly impressed with his pref, I'd probably swap that out. Uh, and as a result, similar to uh, what I did with Forrest, I'm probably not going to go full in on every idea I've had for an axe cav with Chris here. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave at least one thing on the table for like Gunther if I decide I want to do him or if someone else comes out in the future. Uh, but I'll, I'll talk about that more when we get to that. But... Here we are at plus nine. Looking at look at that attack and that speed. That's pretty dang solid. I mean, like, oh, I guess I I left his uh, I left his stuff equipped because I was uh, leveling him up, and I did actually inherit attack smoke to him just because uh, he was having trouble uh, getting through like uh, tempest trials on auto battle with this when he was on his uh, bonus season. But uh, anyway. Uh, his, his stats look pretty good. Here he is, plus 10. Uh, the resin defense, not as important, but uh, one of the builds we have can still take decent advantage of that. Uh, and uh, real quick, while we're here, uh, I did go ahead and make him Astra Blessed, uh, partially just because I like Astra Blessing, and I think it kind of fits with that, uh, like, I don't know, it just 
it looks pretty and I feel like it kind of fits with this. Although I guess light would work too, but um, one of the ideas I had for him was to pair him with Perry, uh, who is on my Astra season. So that's that's part of why he's Astra blessed and that's what we're going to keep him with. Uh, but I feel like most or uh, thematically uh, dark would fit the best. If I decide I want to use him on like arena defense, maybe that's what I'd run him on is dark season. But uh, for now, I'm going to run that Astra blessing because that was what I originally was intending to build him towards was for AR Astra. We also need to come here and change his trait. I've saved up some trait fruits for him. So we can go ahead and bump him up to plus speed. Uh, what we get rid of doesn't really matter. We'll just drop his HP, but uh, he's already merged, so it literally doesn't change anything. But he is going to get a nice plus two boost to his speed. He's going to lose one HP and one uh, attack, though. But that is fine. So now he is plus speed, uh, which with this speed refine, which he will be keeping uh, speed refine most of the time, I would imagine. Uh, he hits a very nice 49 speed at base, uh, which is just below Byleth, but Byleth also has summoner support helping him out a little bit. Uh, actually, I almost forgot, uh, we're going to be next using some more treasures that I've saved up for this occasion, and we're going to give him some flowers to uh, bump him up and get him just a little bit more stats and there we go he's hitting 50 off of his refine so he is tied with Byleth but Byleth is also getting uh, some stats from summoner support uh, there it is uh, so pretty pretty impressive all things considered and again I, I do a lot of speed stacking with like Sedith and uh, Morgan he can also take advantage of Camilla's axe so he's in a pretty good position, I feel. And before we go in and inherit some stuff, let's go ahead and just uh, take care of his uh, accessory while we're at it. Uh, and I've got two ideas. Uh, I can't really decide which one I like more, but uh, I kind of like the Gold Hawk guard on him. Just kind of looks fancy, kind of simple but nice. But the other one is that I'm kind of leaning towards, I was originally planning to use the Gold Hawk Guard, but I'm kind of leaning towards the Exotic Plume because it, again, it kind of just matches what's going on with his uh, special art here. I don't know, that's kind of cool. Um, oh, I guess we could also do, we could do the, the Flame uh, from the Rooker uh, accessory. Uh, is there a more purple one or is that the purpley one? Uh, but like, I don't know, that only kind of works if he's running the uh, Plagian Axe, which isn't going to be the only weapon he has. So I, I kind of like this exotic plume. Let's go with this. That's kind of nice. All right, so I've got a decent list of fodder lined up for him. Uh, most of it's not too exciting, but uh, he does have a nice selection to pick from. Uh, some of this is more just kind of throw-ins with other stuff, like I, I'm getting this drive def just because it helps with something else he's grabbing. So we're gonna grab this from Nana here, and uh, I got this, uh, this five-star Nana because I was going to give, I think I was gonna give Forest Restore from her, and then I ended up doing something else, and so now I've just got a five-star Nana and I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> I don't know what to do with her, but uh, we're going to grab Drive Def for him. All right, so we're going to grab Glowing Ember and Bonfire, and we'll grab Spur Def uh, at the same time from Robin. Uh, one avatar granting their skills to the other. I actually need Fortify Res. We can grab Dragon Fang while we're at it grab fortify res and we're going to grab a uh, hone cavalry but while we're here I actually uh, we can actually just check I was talking about Gunther uh, it's actually not as bad as I remembered but it's still not something that's super exciting to me he does give attack death to infantry and cavalry allies I think that'd be a little more exciting if it was attack and speed 
but uh, we're going to grab this Gunther and just gonna grab grab harsh command but we're here for hone cavalry instead and now we can come over here and grab fortify cavalry from Jagan and we'll also grab fury 2 while we're at it uh, that'll help so now we can grab this grail combat manual I got from the shop and we can grab faithful axe and fury 3 and fury 4 uh, not the greatest throw in, but uh, he can use the axe for like a backup weapon, I suppose. Uh, I don't think it's as good as his other options, but it's it's still okay. Uh, and it's, again, it's just kind of a throw in with Fury 4, uh, which helps him with that uh, AR set that I was thinking of. Uh, though I also did consider just throwing that uh, Fury 4 on, like, Perry or Elliewood. But now Chris has it, uh, so uh, no no take backs. <laughs> and we have a Hawkeye manual that I promoted a while back uh, when I was uh, trying to make sure that I had, uh, that I didn't hit the feather cap. And we'll grab this AoE special alongside it, not that I think I'll use it that much, but it doesn't hurt to grab it. Uh, so he can now refine that for a slaying axe. And I think he'll use attack smoke that I already gave him more often, but we're also going to grab speed smoke just in case uh, if we need to uh, debuff the enemy speed more uh, so that teammates can hit doubles easier. Now he has that option. And we grab drawback at the same time. And we need to grab defense smoke for him, but while we're at it, let's go ahead and grab... Uh, some other stuff. Uh, let's grab Speed Res Form 1 and 2 as well. And then from this 5 star one, uh, let's go ahead and grab Glimmer, Speed Res Form 3, and Def Smoke 3. There we go, he's got the whole kit. As always, never hurts to grab the Meembo. And we'll grab Luna while we're at it. And I already prepared a Krom for him to feast on as well. So we're just going to grab Aether. And similarly, I also prepared a Cordelia manual for him so that we can just go ahead and grab Gale Force. Uh, could grab Pass or Triangle Act, but I'm not that concerned about it. We can get those later if I desperately need them for a map. And I also got a Jam Key uh, combat manual ready for him so we can grab Heavy Blade. Uh, normally, we would prefer Heavy Blade on the seal. But uh, if he's running with Perry, uh, Perry runs the Heavy Blade Seal, so it'd be nice to have the option to run it in his A slot. But for like Abyssal maps, he'll probably run uh, the Heavy Blade Seal if he needs it. Everyone's favorite reposition, and we'll grab Wings of Mercy too because he needs that as well. Uh, for that Perry setup. And... Uh, We'll also just go ahead and grab Swap while we're at it, and uh, we'll just use Set It, so we can grab Brazen Attack Speed just as another uh, A slot option though. Uh, don't think that it'll be his go-to, still wish that Set It had Drive Attack 2 as his uh, 4 star skill because that would be slightly more useful. <laughs> uh, not that important though that we need to drop uh, Feathers for it to get a 5 star version. This one's more of a gimmicky choice, but uh, since he does have that fancy bond axe from Grail, I thought we'd uh, grab a bond skill that he can use as well. Uh, I, I think you can get where I'm going with speed res bond, just knowing me, but we'll get to that in time. Vantage doesn't hurt to grab, and we can grab desperation while we're at it. And we'll grab drive speed for some... Uh, more optional team support. But finally, his last uh, B slot is going to be lull attack speed from this Percival. And uh, I guess we could grab something else, though. None of this is super useful. I guess he could grab attack def solo 3 and 2, 3, 4 from someone else if I really wanted to. Uh, and then grab something else, but... Uh, 
there we go uh, that should cover just about everything uh, there was one other thing and I said I'd mention this I was considering uh, giving him the hammer from Frederick so that he could run an anti-armor build but again like I think I could just leave that option open for someone else either Frederick himself or I could maybe swap out Gunther's axe for a hammer and just run that uh, I don't know but it's something I'd like to keep open I feel like uh, Chris has other things he can do uh, running his speed more uh, and since he can't run no follow-up it's not like he can use the hammer to and his good speed to like break through our like wary fighter and stuff so I think I'd just kind of rather uh, leave that option open to someone else who doesn't have the speed options that he does so uh, with that uh, that takes care of all those skills and uh, now he's got quite a lot of them holy that's that's a lot of stuff to learn <laughs> oh no uh, but first uh, let's go ahead and just grab the weapons um, so that we can refine those and then I'll grind for the rest of the skills and then we'll build him so uh, grab the faithful axe too even though I don't think it'll be used as much So there we go, uh, that gives him three options for axes. He's got the killer axe, well, we'll re refine that to slaying. We have the faithful axe, and we have the plagian axe. Uh, and the plagian axe is already refined for what we need it for. But we can go over here and refine his other weapons. Get the slaying axe. There we go. Get some dew. Uh, and we're just going to take the speed refine on all of these. Maybe later, for specific maps, I might prefer like the def or res refine. But I think the speed one is fine for now. Just grab all the speed ones, and uh, that'll give him some nice options. That's a very uh, convenient number, actually. That's just kind of amusing. All sixes and nines. Uh, but now we can just start learning the uh, rest of these skills. So uh, we'll do that later so i'll take care of all of this and then we'll be back to build him shortly boy i really wish i had axe valor chris go find tiki go go find tiki i know you i know you've talked go get her <laughs> oh all right we are here ready to build up chris uh, first, let's go ahead and give him his blue heart. Uh, that is standard for the generals of the Angel Army. And uh, he has learned all these wonderful skills. So he is now ready to go. And uh, we're ready to uh, build him up. So yeah, uh, like I mentioned, I had that idea for like a an anti-armor setup. But I'm, I'm probably going to save that for someone else, uh, just to give some more variety. Uh, but I do have like four-ish builds here. Uh, two tank setups and two offense setups. Uh, the uh, offense setups are definitely more intended to be Gale Force sets, but you could I could easily swap out uh, something else for Gale Force if needed. Uh, run Luna or Moonbow, etc. And... Uh, so those two Gale Force sets are an initiator and a cleanup set, pretty similar in execution. Uh, so kind of very similar builds, you could kind of count them as the same, just like kind of variations. Kind of similar to Seteth. And also on the uh, two tank sets, one uh, is kind of made from leftover parts from various skills that we inherited from other units. So. Uh, again, kind of like a, more like a build and a half, uh, than like a full true build, I guess. But, uh, we'll go ahead and build them all anyway. So, uh, we'll start with the first tank set. Uh, and, uh, it utilizes the Plegian Axe, which, uh, is his default weapon. And it's 
I always forget about this uh, condition that he has to be not adjacent to an ally, uh, which uh, is kind of bad because I do like to clump my units together, but it is a very powerful effect and worth uh, putting a build around, I think. It, although, uh, I, I do wish it included speed in the penalty, but I, I kind of get why they didn't, because uh, having like minus 19 speed pretty much means you're gonna double, or uh, at least uh, not get doubled, but just about anything. It'd be very powerful for an inheritable weapon at that point, so I get why they kept it at attack and defense only. It's still pretty strong for an effect. Uh, and uh, so he's going to be uh, uh, like a tank that for this build. It's going to be a tank centered around uh, having debuffs uh, thrown around, uh, which is maybe not as strong now that we've got like unity skills and stuff. But uh, for specific scenarios, could definitely see some use. Uh, and we have a decent number of position assists, but I always love reposition on my cavalry units. Uh, even the ranged ones uh, tend to use reposition a lot. It's just always solid, but he does have swap and drawback for various scenarios. Uh, and as a tank set, uh, I do like Aether on my tanks. Although, if he does need more uh, sustain, he does have Soul as a cheaper, more quick charging option. Uh, but I do prefer Aether. Uh, and for his A slot, he could take just about any of these. Uh, we're going to go with Fury because I have it. Uh, and Aether kind of offsets that uh, chip damage, but uh, it does give him a decent uh, boost to all his stats, kind of making him a little more well-rounded. Uh, makes him very difficult to double, and then he's still going to tank a lot from uh, Def Res, assuming he's got that Plagian buff. Uh, so the chip damage won't hurt that bad, and then he just heals it off with Aether. We could also run Mystic Boost to offset that, uh, but he's got lots of other options too. He could take like a, a Brazen, he could take uh, like speed res form. Uh, if I had, if I was going like max investment with him, I would love to get like a stance skill or even like a, a solo four on him, uh, which maybe eventually I could get him a solo. But uh, for now, I think Fury Four is fine. Uh, and then for B slot, uh, he he could definitely run Chill Attack because that synergizes with Plagian Axe. Although uh, it's a little inconsistent if you're only hitting. Uh, one unit at a time. Uh, he could also run like Vantage or Desperation, but I like lol attack speed. Further improves his bulk, uh, makes it harder for enemies to uh, break through because if they can't use buffs and they're debuffed. It's just going to be uh, pretty tough on them uh, to, to break through his defenses. Uh, and then, of course, for his C slot, that's very flexible as always. He could run drives, he could run uh, cavalry support if he's on a full cav team, which I now do actually have enough uh, plus 10 cav units to do a full horse force, uh, <laughs> uh, which is what I call my uh, my cavalry team that I use for training tower. And then uh, for more uh, self-reliant builds, he can take a attack speed or def smoke. Speed smoke doesn't uh, synergize with plug in axe unfortunately but it does still uh make him even harder to double so i don't think it's a terrible option for him but uh we're gonna go with death smoke uh here also uh gives him the ability to uh soften up enemies for someone like sedith or xander and xander often runs attack smoke himself so uh might not always be necessary that he needs attack smoke uh and then for sacred seal uh he of course has so many great options we could toss a very easy uh, solo skill on here uh, so that he's not getting doubled as fast. Uh, we could take Def Solo to double down on his already really solid defense or Res Speed Solo to uh, move his Res up a little closer to his defense, uh, make him better mixed bulk, or just give him Attack Speed Solo because he's got really good attack. He can just kind of beat things up pretty easily with that. We also have Forms as an option, uh, which can give him uh, pretty nice stats without uh, being completely dead if he can't be solo uh, and his axe is turned off. It does give him a little more cushion with that, uh, as long as he's got enough allies nearby. Uh, and I was thinking uh, eventually, once I have like a, a far save armor built up, uh, it'd be kind of cool to have 
Chris uh, tanking on the front line and then have an armor parked like two spaces back and then sweep in and help him uh, because we don't have DC for him. And uh, I could get it eventually, but I don't know that he'll need it necessarily. Uh, he does skew more towards defense uh, than res. So I'm not sure if he'll need DC. I've got lots of other tanks who can tank at range. So I uh, don't know that he needs that. He could also take chill attack here so that his axe is online right away, but still not wild about that. And uh, eventually I want to get some more uh, debuff support on my units that are like dedicated debuffers uh, who could be better pairs for him. Someone like Kaze, for example, or someone else with a dagger who could run like uh, the dagger and then double smoke skills. Uh, and that would free up uh, some room on Chris's kit. Uh, he could take Mystic Boost again to offset that Fury damage. But, uh, and of course we've got all these support skills, Distant Guard, Drives. But uh, I think here we're going to go ahead and take the Attack Smoke. And it's it's wild that we have Attack and Speed Smoke. We've had those for a long time, but still no Def or Res Smoke. Uh, but so with this, uh, he, he can pretty consistently go in, uh, slap someone, and then he can just kind of tank with uh, minus attack, uh, minus 19 attack and defense on the surrounding enemies who get hit by that smoke, and uh, just kind of shrug off their damage and then heal up with Aether. Again, not sure that Fury 4 is optimal on this build, but like I don't have a stance skill, which is another really good option, but uh, I think that's pretty decent uh, for a first setup. Uh, next we'll do that uh, second tank set, we'll just go in order. Uh, so this set uh, utilizes the Faithful Axe, which is a weapon that's not nearly as good as it was when it first came out. I really liked it when it first came out, I put it on Camilla. Uh, just a very easy plus three to everything. Uh, just for having one ally nearby. It's still pretty nice, uh, and it is slightly easier to trigger than uh, the Plegian Axe, which kind of needs some more hoops to jump through. You have to have uh, no allies nearby, which is bad for my playstyle, and you have to have debuffs on the opponent to really make use of it, uh, whereas this is just flat buffs for having one ally nearby. Not bad. Uh, not as exciting. Uh, and of course he could also take Slaying Axe for a faster Aether here. But we'll, we'll just go with the Faithful Axe since we have it. <laughs> uh, grab the reposition. Aether, again, uh, just love that healing. But of course we could take like Bonfire. We could uh, take any of these other things. Glimmer, Moonbow. Uh, but I like Aether. Uh, fits nicely for the tank set. Uh, and we could take Fury 4 again, but like I feel like it's just kind of funny to take like Speed Res Bond. Uh, he could also take Speed Res Form as another option. Uh, but this just gives him even more speed and gets his res up a little higher. Uh, so that he'd have uh, plus 5, so he'd have 32. Uh, 35 res is uh, pretty not bad, actually. Uh, and he'd have uh, plus 5 speed and plus... 3 speed, so plus 8. Uh, so he'd have like 56 speed, I think. Pretty solid. Uh, and then similarly, just take low attack speed for the uh, making it more difficult for enemies to bust through. And then we can take another smoke here. Uh, I like attack smoke for tank sets, though. Uh, again, since Xander has attack smoke, we could also take speed smoke uh, or defense smoke to differentiate. But I, I don't know. Uh, might as well just uh, stick to the tried and true for this and then change based off what the specific map or team comp needs. And then finally in the last slot, uh, pretty much the same options as uh, the other build, but we'll just take speed res bond uh, just to fully stack that. Uh, very simple setup, but uh, not too bad. Uh, he's getting... Uh, He's getting a minus three attack speed on foe from this, and then plus five uh, speed res on these bonds, plus an additional plus three everything. So he would be sitting at a pretty respectable 59. Uh, if my math is right, he'd be sitting at 59 attack, uh, 64 speed, uh, 39 defense, and 
43 res, uh, which is pretty solid. And then minus seven on enemy uh, from attack smoke. Uh, puts him pretty high on both his defenses while still being really speedy. Again, more of a kind of joke build, uh, just kind of using the leftovers from what he inherited from Grail. But uh, it could work, theoretically. <laughs> And uh, I guess speaking of bonds, uh, I I do like to sometimes uh, include the S support on the unit, but I'm thinking eventually if I end up building Summer Norn, uh, I'll probably support her and Chris, even though I probably won't use them on teams together that often. Uh, but they're from the same game, and so like, eh. Even though I, I think most people put Chris with uh, Kit Kat, but unfortunately, uh, Kit Kat is not easily accessible. I wish we had a uh, Grail Katarina because I really think that she's cute. She's got a great design, but uh, she's expensive, so she is not built. <laughs> uh, so anyway, set three and four are both uh, offense oriented. Uh, I have them as Gale Force sets, but really, again, you could easily swap in any of these other options. Uh, but I'm building more with Gale Force in mind just because... Uh, that was actually the first, that was the original set that I had in mind when I saw Chris. I was like, I could use him as green parry uh, for Aether Raids. And uh, my parry is a Gale Forcer, so that's what came to mind for Chris. So take the Slaying Axe, boring, bland, but it works. Uh, gives us faster, more consistent Gale Force. And uh, sometimes that's all you really need. Uh, speed Refine still keeps him at a very respectable uh, speed threshold as well. And then we're going to go ahead and grab Reposition, of course. And uh, we need the Gale Force. Uh, Fury 4 uh, gives him a little bit of extra attack and speed. Uh, the Death and Res don't matter nearly as much, but uh, Fury also makes him able to chip down easier and become a Wings of Mercy target, uh, which is very helpful. And this is the, uh, this first set is the Gale Force Initiator, so he's not going to run Wings of Mercy himself on this build. Uh, he's going to run Desperation 3, so that if he's been uh, chipped down, he can uh, double his opponent and kill them before they can kill him. A uh, little attack speed would also be a good option, uh, but I do like the consistency from Desperation 3. It can be very helpful for uh, certain uh, matchups. And then here in the C slot, uh, he could definitely take any of these uh, various skills. Though I think Speed Smoke is the best if he's initiating. Uh, just slow down the enemies and get them uh, weakened for uh, the other uh, Gelt Forcers to swoop in with Wings of Mercy and help clean up a little more consistently. Uh, Defense Smoke is also a really good option because uh, like on my Astra team, uh, Navarre and Sylvia don't have the greatest attack. So uh, having them uh, able to uh, take advantage of that uh, lower defense could help them get kills a little easier. But uh, Speed Smoke is still pretty nice. And then finally, uh, this one is a lot less negotiable here. Uh, he does need something to make his uh, hits more consistent. Uh, heavy Blade is good for that. Let's him uh, consistently hit that uh, gill. Uh, another idea I had for this build would have been a little more pricey. Uh, would be to actually run the uh, Ninja Axe so that he could uh, get more speed and get a guaranteed double. And then if he uh, stacks his speed even higher, he could theoretically quad uh, with that. And then you could run like Quicken Pulse in the uh, seal slot and have a uh, four cooldown Gale Force at the start and then quad enemies to get uh, the attack off. I don't know, that still sounds interesting to me. I might play around with the idea still, but uh, I don't know. I kind of feel like I'd rather save the Ninja Axe for someone who's like an infantry. Uh, who could also run like Spurn or something. I don't know. I think that's still a cool idea, but I'm not sure how consistent it would be. Uh, especially if you have to get your Gale Force off against someone who has a follow-up denial skill, like Wary Fighter. Uh, it could just fall apart really fast, so I'm not totally sold on the idea. But it is an interesting one. Uh, so, 
So that's the Gale Force Initiator set, and uh, finally is the Gale Force set that uh, was the original plan for Chris. Uh, pretty similar, we're just going to go ahead and toss on the standard stuff. Uh, Fury 4 uh, will not be on this one actually. Heavy Blade 3, because if he's running with Perry, uh, Perry needs the Heavy Blade seal. So he would have to put it in his A slot, unfortunately, and make do with uh, something else. Uh, and then we take Wings of Mercy so we can swoop in and help clean up. And for this, since Perry can run Speed Smoke as the initiator, I'd rather have something like Drive Speed or Drive Attack on the C slot this time, uh, so that he can still support uh, but he it's not just overlapping with parry. And finally, because he is swooping in with Wings of Mercy, he can take attack speed bond here and uh, have a very consistent uh, plus five attack and speed. Uh, just a very simple, very easy solution that doesn't uh, leave him more exposed to damage like life and death would. Uh, because he does still have pretty good defense at base and even his res isn't terrible. Uh, just take the bond because it uh, synergizes with Wings of Mercy on that initial hit. Though I guess uh, Life and Death is a little more flexible if he has to step away on the second hit. But uh, when doing big Gale Force Balls like that, the units tend to be clumped together. Uh, so there's still a strong chance that he'll end up next to someone anyway. So uh, yeah. Not the most exciting builds, not the most uh, out there, but a uh, pretty solid looking setup here for someone that I didn't go super heavy investment into, uh, like some of my other units, like like Sedith, who I just threw every single skill onto. Uh, for being more on a budget, I think Chris uh, looks pretty solid still. So now for the tests. For the uh, Gale Force Wings of Mercy build, uh, he, we'll test him in Aether Raids alongside Perry, since that was the original plan. Uh, but for the other ones, who should we bring? Uh, the original idea when I was first thinking about making Chris was I was going to test him with the Avatar Emblem because that'd be fun. Uh, we'd have the whole squad here. But um, if you look at all the units with the blue hearts, one avatar is missing. Yeah, Robin, where are you, man? <laughs> uh, so unfortunately, that idea is kind of a bust. I mean, we could use both the Corrents, but uh, I don't know. We'll save Avatar Emblem for Robin, I guess, when he finally shows up or something. I don't know. Uh, we could uh, just bring in the Horse Force. That could be fun. That's not a bad team setup. I'm a little disappointed that I couldn't bring the full avatar emblem since that was the main reason that I was building Chris, but uh, this still looks like a solid enough team. Speaking of the avatars, I was thinking like, there's like a, a sliding scale with the avatar characters, right? We've got like a, a nerd jock sliding scale. I think Chris is like firmly on the jock side. Like I think he's the far end of that. And then like Mark from uh, Blazing Blade because he's like a non-combatant. Uh, and then like the other avatars are kind of like in the middle. Like uh, Robin is definitely more studious. And then Corrin can definitely hold his own in combat. Like he's, uh, he he did have like formal sword training from like Xander and everything. And then Byleth, uh, despite being a teacher uh, and definitely being smart, is more on the uh, active side, having that mercenary background. I don't know. I just think it's kind of funny that the uh, the avatars are actually fairly varied in uh, what, what they kind of do and what they specialize in and whatnot. So uh, just a funny observation. But yeah, so let's go ahead and uh, start testing. All right, so we are here to start the test. Uh, first up is the Plaguing Tank set. I do have some concerns. It's going to be a little tricky to get online to start because we don't have anything uh, like a dedicated debuffer to help set up his Plaguing Axe. Although I do have plans for one that might actually be the next project. Uh, but for now we'll have to uh, rely on smoke skills. I actually forgot to mention but uh, Attack Death Menace might be a good choice for a C slot on him but that's a little pricey and I don't have one lying around. I mean like I'm not going to sacrifice Best Daughter Morgan that will kind of what kind of a person would I be if I just did that to, to Best Daughter Morgan? Now, if it was Kana, on the other hand, maybe, but... <laughs> uh, but yeah, so we, we have to make do with the smokes. Another option, it's kind of a meme, but he could run 
seal attack def in his B slot. Uh, and then if he doesn't outright kill a unit, then he can at least debuff them for the next round since the smokes don't affect the unit that you are actually in combat with. But uh, it's kind of gimmicky and uh, I feel like lol attack speed will just be more generally useful. So uh, that's what we're going to go with. But uh, we do have some support to help get him online. We have Xander uh, running his mixed tank set with attack smoke in it. And Leo is running his range tank set with attack smoke. So both of them have the potential to at least set up the attack smoke for Chris. And Forrest uh, has all his support with Savage Blow, Earth Water Bomb, Return. But most notably is Candlelight, which could potentially turn off enemy counterattacks and leave an opening for someone to move in and attack someone and drop the smoke. Uh, so that's another way we can potentially get the smoke online. But, uh,. I feel like uh, once we get Chris uh, up with debuffs on the opponent, we'll have a bit of an easier time. Uh, this is not a great map though, because I don't want to use, I don't want to just park on a defense tile and win that way, because like, that doesn't prove anything. Okay, I tanked on a defense tile, what is, like, okay, that doesn't prove anything. Uh, but we have this to start. Um, that might actually not be terrible. Uh, so if we soften up Caspar, we're just barely missing the kill on him, which is unfortunate. Um, could do it this way. Hit him with Xander. There we go. Uh, Soften him up that way. We'll heal Xander up for that little bit of damage he took. But more importantly, we'll move him out of the way. And move Forrest out of the way. So that uh, Chris can get the uh, solo effect for his Plagian Axe online. Chris will come in and attack Caspar. Uh, we aren't killing him outright, so we're going to take some damage, unfortunately. But we'll take him out. And now we'll see if we can tank. Uh, Innis might be an issue, but I think Ileana will... Yeah, she'll block. She's going to attack, so Innis is kind of blocked off. Uh, which gives us a bit of a chance. Uh, he, took, he tanked that hit from her. Uh, hanging in there. Not able to take out Innis, but... Um... We'll heal up Chris. These defense tiles, man. Very obnoxious. But hit Innis. Chris is doing his job tanking hits, uh, making a little bit of a bottleneck here. Uh, now Leo can come in and finish Innis off. Uh, but we do have to pull uh, him out of the way so that Chris can tank the next round safely. Uh, hopefully. Uh, ooh, that's a lot more damage than I was hoping. Ooh. Uh, drop the attack smoke. But there we go. With the with all those attack debuffs, Owain can't actually uh, damage Chris, even with the triangle advantage. And uh, Chris hangs in there. And now he should be able to, yeah, just go over and finish off Ileana. So, wasn't the cleanest victory, but that worked pretty well. Uh, he, he made a big bottleneck and uh, just kind of picked off enemies uh, as they got or uh, made opportunities for us to pick off enemies. And then he uh, tanked with that Plagian Axe. It was pretty cool. Certainly not uh, the cleanest victory, but it worked. <laughs> All right. So next we are going to test the Bond tank set. Uh, again, I feel like since this is kind of cobbled together from the leftover Faithful Axe and is kind of just a... Another option for when I can't have Chris solo for the Plagian Axe. I feel like this isn't going to be a great setup. It's honestly probably better with like Fury 4 and Slaying. I don't know. I liked the theme of actually using the Faithful Axe. So probably not as going to be as good. Uh, could probably use like a Bond 4 or a Unity skill just to up the power a little bit. But uh, we'll see how this performs. 
All right, so got a big old Marth fan here. I actually know a, a big Marth fan. Uh, very cool guy uh, that I met on Twitter. Uh, so anyway, uh, what are we doing here? Uh, Mini Marth is going to be an issue because we're all cavalry. That's no good. Um, but the rest of this, probably not that bad. I mean, like, we don't have triangle advantage against this Marth, but, uh, we should be okay, I feel. Uh, so let's go ahead and we can start by baiting out this Marth. Uh, that shouldn't be that tricky. So let's just bring everyone over and bait him out. Let him run into us. We'll double back. Uh, actually, this is kind of amusing. Uh, Chris vs. Marth, the unexpected matchup. But we tanked that like a champion. And now we'll just finish him off. Farewell, Lord Marth. Uh, we'll take up the cause. Uh, you can rest now. Speaking of rest, we do have to find a way to put down Mini Marth here. Uh, or he's going to make us rest. That's no good. So, we're not in immense danger. Let's just heal Chris real quick. Um, and just chill. We'll wait. We can, we'll have Forest close so that we can potentially turn off his counterattacks or something if necessary. We attack into him. Yeah, he's going to slam us for 76. That's just so much. Um, regular Marth is not a big th threat, but I, yeah, let's just pull back. Ah, see, I don't want him on defense tile, but I don't want to use the defense tiles either. So I guess we'll just have to take that. So we'll let him attack into us. He'll be on a defense tile, so we're not going to do anything outside of our aether, but that's fine. Hit him back, do a good chunk, and let's let's hit him with the uh, uh, the candlelight. Turn off his counterattacks. Uh, more importantly, uh, do a little savage savage blow to Mini Marth there. And I think we're going to have to just have Chris retreat. Unfortunately, his, even though his base attack is good, uh, and then Faithful at faithful Axe is bumping that to a pretty nice 59 attack, um, it's just not that much. I mean, like, yeah, he's got weapon triangle advantage, but maybe he needs attack speed bond instead. I like the... Uh, I like raising the res for the mixed tank because you guys know I love my mixed tanks, but uh, I mean like we're the the res is only gonna really apply to dragons for the most part, so maybe um since we don't have DC running running like attack speed or attack def or speed def bond would be better. Uh I don't know. But that that's the kind of thing we test. That's the reason we do these tests is to see what needs to be changed and I feel like right now Chris's base attack is just a little low uh, so we're gonna turn off Mini Marth's counter attacks get him out of here no more of that thanks uh, and uh, can't quite kill him with can't do anything with Chris can't quite take him out with Xander but we can uh, hopefully finish him off with a Xander Leo combo so Leo Hits him, splashes the drink in his eye. Now he's double blind. Uh, can't see because of the light from the candle. Can't see because he's got juice in his eye. And now Xander's just going to come up. Finish him off. Xander prefers an honorable fight, but sometimes you just got to play dirty. Uh, which is what that Vantage Rapier is doing. It's just completely hard countering our team here. So going to have to uh, say no to that. And... We could tank... Let's just tank... Oh, let's just heal Chris for now. Um, There we go. Give us... Get his... Def and res up a little bit. Um, Well, see, we do that, but then... What? 
I feel like anywhere we move, we're gonna have them on a defense. We're gonna have this duo on a defense tile, which is not great for us. Huh? All right, do that. Yeah, and turn. Let's see them attack into us. They're off the defense tile now. So can we do something? Ah, not doing much, but we. I think we can finish them. We baited him off the defense tile with Chris. Uh, Xander would have been a better choice because we would have done damage back, but I wanted to test. I, and then I attacked with Leo first, but I really should have attacked with Forrest uh, first, but that's fine. Uh, get Chris over here and finish him off. Get hit by the fire emblem, but that's okay. Chris strikes and finishes the job. So, not the cleanest match either, uh, but it worked. Uh, I do, I really do think, uh, speed res bond, probably not the way to go. As funny as it is to stack the, the res, uh, I think, uh, he just needs more attack or more defense, um, for this kind of build. The faithful axe will still give him three res, so he'll be at 30 res, and then the lull, uh, gives him 33 and if the enemy's been hit by attack smoke that would jump up to 40 so he'd still have 40 res which is still really good uh so yeah i probably could just drop the uh drop the speed res bond and run like attack speed bond but now we know and again that's the purpose of the tests so next we are going to test the standalone offensive setup uh, which is kind of what I envision as his main setup going forward. Uh, being offensive, it's a pretty nice contrast to his fellow cavalry units uh, like Leo and Xander, who are more defensive oriented. And although I did envision this as a Gale Force setup, we could easily swap Gale Force for Aether, Moonbow, even Bonfire uh, to run an offensive setup that isn't hyper offensive like Gale Force tends to be. He has plenty of options, although not really in his A slot. Fury 4 is kind of his best A slot at the moment. Uh, and that's why we're running Desperation over Lull Attack Speed, is uh, kind of synergizes with Fury a bit better. But uh, another option that I remembered exists is Flow Refresh, which could be used to uh, break through things that try and stop his uh, follow up attacks since he's naturally pretty speedy. Uh, could be a good choice. Uh, and it would also keep him topped off, which could counteract Fury damage. And also, if we swapped Fury for something else, uh, it could still be used to heal him uh, without having to rely on Aether like I normally have to with my units. Uh, could be run alongside Gale Force or Moonbow just to keep him healthy. Uh, but Sedith will get first priority on Flow Refresh whenever I end up with that. So you have my thanks. It'll probably be a while before Chris gets his hands on it, but it's something to keep in mind in the future so anyway we've got uh not a great team for gale forcing i feel tiki's gonna slow down our heavy blade uh and ike just doesn't do doesn't make uh continuous attacks great but we'll see what we can do let's let's pull everyone up um like that and uh, see if, okay, there we go. Veronica is over here, but can't do a whole lot to her on the defense tile. And she's pretty fast as well. Um, if I, we can have Leo chip her down. There we go. Uh, and that's fine, we take some damage back. But now, Chris can move down and not finish her, really? Why is she suddenly... Oh, we got debuffed. Duh. Duh, I'm stupid. Uh, we'll chip her with Forrest then, fine. I've got options. Uh, you don't. Chris is gonna get rid of all your options right there. And uh, we'll just have Chris uh, tank uh, Ike. That should be fine. And pass turn. Ike is going to attack into us and uh, do a good chunk, but uh, 
We don't do a lot back, but now our Gale Force is nice and ready. Um, so we could go and attack Tiki. We can't finish her, though. Um, we could just heal and then retreat, uh, which might be the best thing to do right now. Uh, do that and pull back. And uh, pass. Uh, with the bomb, we should be able to take more damage uh, without dying. And there we go. Chip him down a little more. Alright, so if we attack into Effie, we can't finish her. But... Um... Do have Desperation online, so we do a good chunk. If we have Leo attack Effie... Almost take her down with the Iceberg. That'll put her in good range for Chris to hit her and then trigger Gale Force. And then we can bounce down. We can't finish Tiki though, unfortunately. But if we soften Ike up a little more, turn off his counter attacks. Now can we take him out? No, not quite. Uh, but we could do this have Xander soften him up a little more and now Chris can take him out with Gale Force so not quite what I was hoping to do but got some stuff going there um, and we we can't get Tiki white um, so we'll pull back and move Forrest down to get ready All right, turn off her counterattacks. Not that it matters because we do have desperation, but uh, get a little damage on her, uh, soften her up, and now Chris can go down and finish the job. Uh, not the cleanest Gale Force sweep, but uh, considering the uh, units were kind of stacked against us there, uh, we'll take that. Uh, it worked all right. And here we are in the Aether Keep to test the final setup, which is the Gale Force cleanup build uh, that I wanted to run on Astra Season to balance out the color coverage of my lopsided uh, offensive team. Uh, but there's a big issue. Back when I decided I wanted to build Chris and I had this in mind, uh, there was a unit that didn't exist yet. And that unit was Seros, who uh, is now everywhere on Astra Season, which is the season that Chris would need to be covering on. And uh, she kind of completely destroys him because she has very high defense naturally. And then Dragon Wall uh, makes that even uh, makes his damage even lower uh, because there's no way he's going to win the res check against her. And... While he's very fast, uh, that speed ends up doing nothing because she's so slow, uh, so it's all wasted points. And uh, it doesn't matter anyway because she negates his follow-up attacks, so there's just really no way for him to do anything against Seros. Uh, maybe if he had Flow Refresh, but in that case, he wouldn't be able to use Wings of Mercy, so it would still fall apart. And So I'm just not sure that Chris brings anything to the table here, but I guess we can try it anyway. Um, yeah, that's, it, it's really unfortunate Chris just isn't going to be able to bring enough to the table, I feel, uh, to make this worthwhile, but we'll try, uh, we could at least use the bolt tower, I guess, uh, well, hmm. I, I don't like using the bolt tower for, like, something like this, because if, it's kind of, like, luck dependent, were they did they happen to be close enough that we uh, hit him with the bolt tower? And usually the answer would be no. So I guess we'll do that. Uh, trigger that uh, trap. And now we can have Perry come up. Take out Elliewood. We won't finish him. Or we won't get the whole uh, Gale Force charge. But we'll do some damage at least. Uh, take him out. And... Uh, now Chris could take out Klein, um, and 
actually only barely. Uh, that's a very bulky uh, Klein, actually. Uh, we don't want to actually send him because that joint drive attack, I think, is pushing him high enough that he actually beats us. Oh, no, we got our bond. Uh, let's... We could also take out Thrasir instead. Um, we're for sure winning that matchup, so let's just take out Chris. Or, uh, take out Thrasir. Trigger our Gale Force. And... Um... Take out Nils, or we okay? Yeah, I thought so. Uh, we'll move over and dance Riggin. All right. Uh, move over here. Ah, uh, Sylvia doesn't do it. All right, dance Riggin again. <laughs> she needs a lot of help this time. And she'll take out Saros. Uh, just shoot her down. Bam, 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 bam. Bow. All right, a lot of fanfare just to, to get rid of her. Um, and that still not that still doesn't leave us in a great position because we had to use so many dances just to get over there and take her out. Uh, All right, Mirabliss is attacking Chris. Oh, that's a lot of damage for a non-offense oriented unit. Uh, Ike attacks into Navarre. Barely survives. Uh, we are gonna lose Riggin here, but it wasn't actually as bad as we expected. Uh, down she goes. Mm. All right, uh, I can take out Ike. Perry cannot move. Uh, can't take out Nils. So we'll have Navarre take out Ike. Like so. Trigger his Gale Force. Chris can move over and take out Nils. Chop. Here comes a Moonbow. Which I think we only survived because of the defense tile, actually. Uh, and we'll break that. Have Navarre break that. Um, break that, break that, and now Perry finishes off Mirabliss. Far from a perfect match, but uh, it it did show Chris can do the Gale Force thing. I'm just not sure that he's worth the team slot. Unfortunately, uh, just a few too many issues, I feel, but uh, he does work as a uh, backup Gale Forcer. So that is our newest plus 10 Chris uh, and uh, his various builds. Uh, definitely a little more iffy on these. Uh, I'm not in love with uh, these builds the way I was with like Forest setup. Uh, but uh, I do think he's, he's cool. Uh, I think he just maybe needs a little more work. A little more fine tuning, but for being on a budget, uh, it wasn't terrible, uh, not bad, uh, just not as impressive as I was hoping. <laughs> uh, for a modern day unit, uh, I don't think he's quite shining or anything like that. All of his builds kind of have some kind of issue with them, I feel. The uh, Plagian tank definitely needs someone more dedicated to setting him up uh, with some debuffs. The uh, Bond tank uh, definitely needs more attack. Just swap out those uh, speed res bonds for attack. Speed bonds would probably help him a lot. Uh, that's a fairly easy fix at least. And then the uh, Gale Force sets uh, are a little inconsistent I feel. Although maybe it's because this one I was fighting on Arena Assault Maps with. Uh, units that maybe aren't the best show of his skills, a lot of things like Wary Fighter or uh, Defense Tiles that can kind of make him a little inconsistent. Uh, and then the Gale Force cleanup set, uh, I feel like he just, Saros is just too much of a natural counter for him. He might do better on Light Season, but uh, I wanted him specifically for Astra Season, so 
it's a little disappointing having him just kind of not work <laughs> uh, in the season that I built him for, but uh, we'll see. Maybe he just needs some overhauling of his kit uh, in some places or some different skills, but uh, I do still think he has potential. Uh, so anyway, thank you guys as always for watching and joining us. Uh, even if this wasn't uh, a total success, uh, at least uh, we made someone interesting and new. So uh, thank you guys as always so much for watching. Until next time, this is Hoodie Angel Brandon and Chris signing out.